today's video is about visceral fat and especially about visceral fat in Indians. Us Indians, we've got a problem with visceral fat. We've got too much of it. So there's a phenotype, there's an acronym for it. It's called TOFI. T-O-F-I. It's thin on the outside, fat on the inside. So you'll, you'll notice that quite a few of us Indians, we tend to look very lean, but uh, we get heart attacks quite early. So you'll, you'll, you'll have people talking about, oh, he, was, he looked quite fit and thin, but uh, he's developed a sudden heart attack. Now that's because of this problem, uh, our problem with visceral fat. Now the theory is that Indians have been through several generations of famine and uh, starvation. So our genetics have been trained to become more efficient with storing calories. So it, it's called the thrifty gene hypothesis. So, so what, what our genetics is supposed to be doing these days is it's preparing for a famine that never comes. We've got an excess of food these days and, and we're not in famine anymore. So our body starts to store fat and it never gets rid of it. Now, there's two places where the fat is normally st stored. One is under your skin and the other is around your organs, which is called visceral fat. Now, the visceral fat used to be helpful in the evolutionary past. Now, it's a problem uh, because all we're doing is storing. We're not letting it empty out. So, why is it there? So, when there's an excess of calories, the body needs to store it for the future. Like I said earlier, and uh, visceral fat is very active in the sense that it absorbs fast and it releases fast. You just have to give it a chance to release that uh, store of fat. Uh, what happens when you start to continuously store into visceral fat? It, it gets to its limit. It gets filled up. And once it's filled up, uh, the fat cells can't take any more of that load of fat. And it starts to get inflamed. And the inflammation of the visceral fat is then what triggers the cascade of disease that happens later on. Like heart disease, strokes, dementia, uh, accelerated aging, osteoarthritis, uh, even loss of muscle mass. So, so there's what's called sarcopenic obesity, which sarcopenia means loss of muscle mass. And obesity is obesity, fatness. So even sarcopenic obesity is thought to be mediated by the neurochemical mediators that are released by visceral fat. That's also a theory. There are still studies being performed on that. Now, so, so why is it harmful? It's harmful because of this inflammatory effect it has on the rest of the body, the way it raises insulin resistance, uh, the way it causes uh, increased uh, uh, lipids and triglycerides in the blood. Um, so all of this it can cause, uh, that's how it causes problems, that, that's how it causes disease. So we'll go back to the original question. Why do we have so much of it um, around the viscera? So the first thing is we are eating too much. We are eating too much energy. We are consuming too many calories. And most of the calories come in the form of fat and carbohydrates. And in the case of most health conscious Indians, it's mostly carbohydrates. They're not loading up on fat. So if you take a lot of uh, grain-based carbohydrates, if you take a lot of refined carbohydrates, um, flour-based foods, sugar, uh, you're going to end up with a lot of visceral fat. If you're going to not move enough, you're going to end up with a lot of visceral fat because now there's no reason for the visceral fat to be mobilized as an energy store. So it's not enough if you move just one hour a day. You need to move throughout the day. So you need to find ways to move throughout the day. This is again in comparison to what used to be in the past. So uh, 30, 40 years ago, Indians used to move a lot more. We, we, we would have to use a cycle or we'd have to walk or we'd have to use public transport. Now, as we become more and more affluent, you're sitting down a lot more for your work. And you're also using motorized transport, using machines to do work. So it, so you, you're expending less energy throughout the day. And you're moving less throughout the day. The third uh, main factor why we've got so much visceral fat is we're not emptying our stomachs enough. We're not, we're not giving our digestive system enough of a rest period. So breakfast is at 8, 
for most people or roughly around 8 and then you're having a dinner really late in the evening so maybe 8 9 or even 10 pm and there are people who eat late at 11 pm and pride themselves about it it's not a good habit because if you really need the fat stores and the liver glycogen stores to be emptied or at least start to get mobilized you'll need at least 14 to 16 hours of a break between the dinner of the night before and the breakfast of the next day so there's hardly any fasting anymore plus there's a lot of snacking on a day-to-day basis now the final part that most people are not really aware about or concerned about is toxin exposure so the toxins can come from two directions one is from the outside and one is from the inside so the toxins from the outside i've spoken about earlier air air pollution pollution of uh, the water you drink uh, toxins in the food you consume, um, the toxins in the products that you apply on your skin, in your mouth, on your hair, hair dye, whatever. So all of these get absorbed. And when there's a big toxic load and your body can't get rid of that big toxic load, the body tends to try and store it in a safe place before it can be disposed of finally. And this safe place is usually the fat, usually the visceral fat, because that's where it does the least damage so that's where the body is going to put it into and but the problem is now that the toxins in there the body is going to be less hesitant to mobilize that fat and it's going to hold on to it because the moment it mobilizes a large amount of that visceral fat a large amount of toxin is also going to enter the system so the body is going to get more and more hesitant to let go of that visceral fat so toxin exposure is a big part so that was about external toxins The internal toxins mainly come from the bacteria that already reside in your gut or maybe in uh, cavities in your tooth or if you've got a long-term infection that you have not dealt with properly. So these toxins will also enter your system and they need to be safely sequestered or stored till till when you clear that infection and till when you can get rid of those toxins. So these toxins need to be dealt with too. Now, the most common source of this internal toxicity is endotoxin and that's from the gut itself and depending on your diet if your gut if your gut has an imbalanced population of microbes you're going to produce more of that endotoxin and it's going to spill over into your system more and more easily so having a balanced diet having a diet with plenty of fiber that can balance out the population having less processed foods, all of that helps with maintaining a proper microbial population in your gut and that can help with reducing the toxic exposure. Now the same toxins that the gut produces then get carried into the liver and the liver has to deal with it. And when the liver has a large toxic load to deal with, it turns fatty. It starts to use more and more fat to protect itself from the toxins that has been exposed to. This is one of the reasons why there's an increase in fatty liver these days. The toxins that are produced in the gut are normally produced and as long as they stay in the gut, they're okay. It's only when they get absorbed into the system that it's such a problem. Now, you can, if you eliminate the food that you consume fast enough, you're not going to let that toxin spill over. So having constipation puts you at risk for greater endotoxemia, having that toxin enter your system, uh, having more of that toxin absorbed. So dealing with constipation is important when you want to reduce the toxic load on your system. If you, if you, if your next question is going to be, how do I reduce my visceral fat? All you need to do is reverse engineer what I talked about earlier. Eat more natural foods, eat less refined foods, eat, eat less flour-based foods, eat less sugar, move more, move more frequently and move at a low intensity for longer duration. In Try and incorporate fasting into your daily routine um, and try and minimize the exposure to toxins, e- external environmental toxins and the toxins from inside, which includes Uh, So you can reduce exposure to internal toxins by making your diet is balanced and it has a good amount of fiber and by dealing with constipation in a serious manner. 
not simply neglecting it. So these are all easy ways in which you can reduce visceral fat. So I'm just giving you a broad outline. If you've got more specific questions that I can't answer in a single comment, I'll put up a follow-up video. So, And if you've got questions, put them in the comments. Thank you for listening.